All right, here I am in vector.com. My video cut out at 15 minutes, and so it left me with this open path. And it's a good idea to always close your paths. But you want to make sure you understand why you're closing them and where. So I'm going to close it by connecting it with where I started. And now it's a closed path. But at any time, as long as I'm not on the pin tool, because the pin tool will always start a new path, so let's say I'm on layers. I can double click on that path as long as it's not locked and see all the anchor points and click on anchor points and hold down command and be able to adjust the curves. And here is an example where I need another anchor point. This is just too complicated a curve. And then once I have those other anchor points, I can move them around and then play with those curves. Double click, find the anchor point, move it around, and then adjust the curves. So it's, and then remember you can hold down option, or not option, uh, command, and always adjust them. And it's easy to be a slave to your sketch, but you can also improve your sketch. Because that's the beauty of using the pin tool with very few points, is you can actually sometimes delete points and do more just with fewer anchor points. if you use your curves. And then sometimes you realize, no, I need an extra anchor point there. <laughs> and then I need to play with those curves. But a habit that kind of beginners in this, and it makes sense, get into are just creating way too many anchor points for what they need. So try to be effective with how you use the curves and the straights. And again, just something without any curves is the easiest thing to do. But it's an incredibly robust tool. There we go. That's what I wanted. And you can see they turn solid blue when they've been selected. So you want to really know which ones you're affecting as you go. Okay. Now I've got that shape. Remember, if I look at layers, I can turn on and off different paths. Sometimes you create paths you don't actually need or want. You can delete those. And each path has properties. And I want to turn on the fill once I'm done with it and turn off the border. And if the fill is not, is not black, I want to make that color black at 100%. Okay, this shows us how we can layer up these different shapes, like they're cut out of paper. So I started with one very simple, which was the beak. And then I layered one that's curved. And then I put another curved one with some straights on top of that. The problem is now, because these are different paths, you know, this one versus this one, that there's a little lip there that I can't make work until I merge them into one path. So this is an essential skill in order to fine tune your design. So I'm going to show it at this point. First, let me uh, turn off this path just so I can show you how I can merge the beak with the head. Okay, so you can both see how they're, I'll do them as different colors just so you can see really clearly. Okay, so first, why is it thinking it's not colored? All right, 
Let me change the color here, make it red. And then let me take the head here, turn it on as well. You can also move the order of the paths up and down, just like you can in Illustrator or in Photoshop or in Photopea. <laughs> so now what I want to do is select each one and hold shift and combine them. And once you've selected multiple paths that are overlapping each other, these options, which are called the Pathfinder options, are available to you. The first one is to unite them, add them together. And that's exactly what I want. But there are some others too that can be useful. For instance, if I wanted to subtract this shape from this shape, I could do that. Boom. But what I want to do in this case is I want to add them together. It's going to take whatever properties of the one on top. So because I colored the one on top red, it's going to come through red. I'm going to keep that red, and then I'm going to layer it with this path. And I'm going to combine them. And that will allow me to smooth out that little lump. So what do I do? I hold down shift, I select both of them, I get these options, and I unite them. Now they're all black, because that's the top property. Now if I double click on it, Lo and behold, there's one point now where they come together. That's where it looks a little weird. So what do I do? I click on that point. I get the curves. I hold down Command. Come on. Click on that point. I get the curves. Hold down Command, and I can adjust that curve on both sides until it's even. can even adjust it over here to help it be what I want. It's almost perfectly smooth. To get it perfectly smooth, I want to line those two curves up with each other. Because this is one of those rare cases where you have an S curve, so you need a curve coming out of both sides of that point. So for the curves to flow nicely and not give you a little angled point, you need the line of them to be in sync with each other. And to do that, you can actually hold down Shift. And you see how Shift will keep them lined up. And then if I wanted a more complex curve, I would need to add an anchor point like that and then kind of stress it down. So now that curve is nice and even on all sides. And it is just one path now. And if I turn off my sketch, you can see how clean that is. So I'm halfway there. Woohoo! Just using the pen tool. Are there other tools? There are, but let me save it first. So how do I save this? What you're going to do is export it. There is no save button. There is only export. And when you export it, you have these different options. First, you want to export it as a VECTR. That's a vector file, which means when you open that in vector.com, it will remember all your settings. And then you can download that. Don't worry about all of this stuff. All of it's kind of arbitrary. As long as you can see your anchor points, you've got a vector. The other way it can be helpful to download it is as an SVG. This stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. And it can be opened in other programs other than Vector, including Illustrator. The problem is opening an SVG from Illustrator in Vector can cause Vector some issues. So we try to just work within Vector. But when we're all done with it, we're going to save it as an SVG, and then we're able to use it in PhotoP as well. Okay, so let's get back to it. Where did that go? Where can I save it? Just like in PhotoP, it goes to your downloads. You don't get to name it. So now I want to take that page one vector file right here, and I want to give it a name. So SP23-2, Carl, assignment four, black shape, vector dot vector <laughs> okay there it is i'm going to mark it 
this is an unusual file type, right? It's just for this freeware. So it's not going to have any icon preview for it because my Mac OS isn't used to it. But I save it in my folder, in my assignment 4 folder, along with my refined sketch and this other stuff I've done including my little PSD of my secondary refined sketch. And then I can also save these SVGs of it. Now SVGs cannot be opened with preview or a usual image program, but they can be opened with browsers. And so you'll notice that I have my vector here and my vector is clean, but this, I also had my sketch layer turned on. So the sketch layer is gonna show as well. So SVGs are weird, but they're a good backup to save because you can also open those up in vector.com. Okay, now I'm gonna close vector.com so that I can show you how to load your image once you've saved it. Use online. It remembers, this is the nice thing, it remembers what I was using, but I can also just say open file and then go to my folder and click on the vendor or vector file, which will only open in this program. And then it's there. So that's why it's a good way to back it up. Okay, how can I continue? Do you think it's safest? If this were your project, this is a good question for you. I'm looking at layers. I now have just one path and one sketch. Do you think it's safest for me to edit it directly from this path? So to like maybe start at this point? Or is it better to be on a new path and then merge them after the fact? I, I'm gonna say new path too, especially because of this curve, right? That's kind of a complicated curve that's gonna get messed up if I start adding to it. So. How can I make a new path? I can lock this one and then use my pen tool and start again with my first curve. And then hold down command, bring that all the way back. Start with my next curve, no matter how subtle. Then hold down command, bring that leading handle back. Then my next curve. Make it very subtle. Hold down command, bring that back to a straight, then to a subtle curve. Hold down command, bring that handle back to a straight, keep it as a straight. Then make this into a curve. Hold down command, bring that leading handle back to a curve. Hold down command, bring that leading handle back to a straight, to a straight. Probably to a straight, to a straight. I can always curve them later. Can I do this all in one curve? Let's find out. Almost to a curve, bring down this handle. Remember, I can always add an anchor point to a curve. You can even move your anchors as you go. Click on it. Now close the path. Okay. Now if I turn off the other path, Move this up above. I have a little twist going on that I need to fix there at the end because I was doing that behind another path. So I double click, see what's going on with these curves, hold down command. I can make these work. I can move them. I can tighten it up. Whoops. If you double click, it will make a curved path or a curved anchor point into a straight anchor point. 